brother. And this is what it's all about. It's about love and generosity. Uh, we want for nothing here. People bring us food every day. I gained weight. Like seriously, the, the, the hot food, chili, soups, uh, sausages yesterday. And people are doing this out of love and, 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 and thankfulness for what we're doing here. It's a protest that at times feels like a tailgate. Several hundred truckers forming a blockade in Ottawa, the capital of Canada, rallying against the country's COVID-19 mandates. This is not fringe. You look at just the people that come down here from everywhere. This is the majority. Thousands have joined the so-called Freedom Convoy here, with over 400 vehicles now parked in the red zone around Parliament. Ottawa's downtown paralyzed with traffic, noise, and rowdy protesters. Now entering its third week, the standoff is at a standstill. Protesters saying they'll stay out here until all of Canada's COVID restrictions are lifted. Earlier this week, the mayor of Ottawa declaring a state of emergency. Police threatening to arrest anyone caught bringing gas and other supplies to the truckers. So far, at least 25 arrests have been made. We have 126 active criminal investigations and we have over 400 hate incidents that have been reported to our hate app hotline all of which are being investigated. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau calling the protesters a small fringe minority and blaming the Conservative Party for enabling the blockades. We understand how important it is to put an end to these barricades. We understand how important it is for people to get their lives back, to be able to get their livelihoods back. I thought you were a fearless leader, Justin. The occupation sparked by a COVID-19 vaccine requirement for truckers crossing the U.S.-Canada border implemented in January. Why was it important for you guys to show up at this protest? We don't have choice. So the mandates do not provide choice. Or if you're not vaccinated, you can't go. You can't participate in society. You can't go to a restaurant. You can't go to the theater. It's a lot of coercion, and it just makes me mad. And uh, like I've had enough. I'm not, I'm not taking any more. Andy Wing is an IT professor currently on leave without pay. His brother-in-law Mark Mino has been a truck driver for over 30 years. Both refuse to get vaccinated. Some locals in Ottawa hail Andy, Mark, and other protesters as heroes. You're changing the course of history, You're changing lives. What was the straw that kind of broke the camel's back for you guys and decided to get you guys out there? We were all unhappy about the lockdowns and the, the, the negative impact on everybody, our kids, our grandchildren. For the truckers, when you start saying you can't work anymore, you can't cross the border, you know, you can't stop trade just for a mandate that is not necessarily protecting anyone. We're tired of hearing from Justin Trudeau, don't worry, we got your back. He doesn't got our back. The only back he's got is his own. So we have food storage, we've got a TV with a DVD player. Truckers are uniquely positioned to wait this out. Their cabs designed for living on the road for long stretches of time. We're going over two weeks now. If the police, if local officials were able to cut off gas, how long do you guys think you'd be able to last out there? We're here till we're we'll, we're here till we get the results we're looking for. It doesn't it doesn't matter eh, uh, whether I got fuel or not. I don't care. I'm not leaving. People have not been able to go home. Factories have slowed production. Is this the end goal? I understand people got to work and they want to go home. I don't want to. I don't. I'm not here to stop people from working. But the market is slowed down because of this pandemic. It's already slowed down before. So I, you can't blame it all on the convoy. Some living inside the protest area complaining of being harassed. Others even afraid to leave their homes to go to work. When you don't work and you're working $15 an hour, you miss a shift. You can't pay your rent. I think that definitely it's been pretty disruptive to to the community across Canada. There are now several spin-off demonstrations causing three critical points of entry between the U.S. and Canada to be closed or clogged with traffic, including the Ambassador Bridge, a lifeline from Detroit into Windsor, the Blue Water Bridge between Port Huron and Sarnia, and the Coots Crossing connecting Montana with Alberta. Some stuck idling for more than 12 hours. Like everybody you see here, they're waiting and they're tired, they want to go home, they want to see their families. Factories on both sides of the border already feeling the impact of the choked supply chain. General Motors in Michigan canceling three shifts due to a shortage of parts. And Ford running a few Canadian plants at reduced capacity. This industry employs over 100,000 Canadians and every hour that a plant goes down impacts Canadian jobs. The Canadian Trucking Alliance estimates 85 to 90 percent of the 120,000 Canadian truckers who drive cross-border routes are vaccinated. 
and that it appears many of the Ottawa protesters have no connection to the trucking industry.